Hey, everybody, how are you? Bo Prosser here. I am live tonight on Facebook and uh, recording this on Zoom as well. But it's good to be with you uh, alive and in person for a change. Thanks for joining me. I hope you'll shoot some emojis my way in the next few minutes as we share together. Uh, Bo Prosser, the Center for Christian Education, thanks so much for joining me tonight as we share. Uh, on a personal note, thanks for the cards and responses and texts and so many of you that have reached out to us during these past few months. My mom passed in April, my stepfather in June, and it's just been one wave after another wave after another wave. So we are uh, moving forward kind of in the in-between time, I like to say right now, but uh, your presence in our lives has certainly been a comfort, and I want to thank you for that as we begin tonight. Tonight, uh, we're looking at the Smith & Hellas Formation Series lesson outline for Sunday, July the 28th, The Lion's Den, uh, looking at Daniel 6, and uh, this lesson from Daniel, as well as other lessons from Daniel, uh, certainly have been applicable to some of the things that have been going on in the world. And uh, this is another one of those weeks where you'll need to pay some attention in your Bible study group to uh, what's been happening in the world. Uh, the world continues to challenge us and perhaps give us insights into our roles as people of Jesus. And every week over the last few weeks, there's been another thing that's come up that uh, people want to hear a word from God about. And where is God in the midst of all of this? So uh, the book of Daniel gives us some insight into it. Uh, and we will see that tonight. Uh, because Daniel believes in Yahweh, Jehovah God, uh, he can't be trusted. So goes the story of the jealous leaders in the land of Babylon. Darius has uh, made himself really happy by putting uh, all these governors across the land uh, 127 or more, and there were several levels of bureaucratic leadership, and Darius put all those in place so he wouldn't have to pay much attention to anything other than just enjoying the spoils of being king. And of all of those leaders in place, Daniel is the one that has the ear of the king, and everyone else is jealous about that. So they begin to look for a reason to take Daniel down. Daniel is faithful beyond measure. And so the only thing the other leaders can find about Daniel is that he prays to Yahweh God. And so that faith makes him vulnerable in this story. A lawless decree is sent out by an exploited king. And despite the decree, Daniel continues in his faith. And off to the lion's den, he will go. Verse 7 is especially intriguing to me. All of the officials of the kingdom agreed to what needed to happen. Every political leader in the nation agreed that Daniel was dangerous because he was a man of faith. How in the world did that happen? How in the world would every religious leader agree on the same thing at the same time? You have seen in recent days a majority of religious leaders are of political leaders agreeing on a decision that might need to have been made, but there certainly was not a unanimous thought. And evil is so powerful 
evil is powerful among us and evil is powerful in Daniel's day as well. Every official in the kingdom agreed Daniel is dangerous. Maybe there is some artistic imagination woven into this passage, regardless of whether every one of them felt that way or not. It sure felt that way. And uh, oftentimes it feels that way. The king is easily manipulated. The group of advisors are especially evil, and a man of God stands in the breach. And we know where that story is going to go. Evil always wins on the front end. To quote a line from Ted Lasso, the truth will always set you free, but first it will beat the crap out of you. I'm uh, paraphrasing. Imagine as a man of God, faithful to God, imagine how you would have felt being thrown into a cave of hungry lions. Imagine how you would have felt seeing that stone across the mouth of the cave to lock you in. Imagine in the dank darkness of that cave with those lions, how you are trying to keep calm in the midst of an overwhelming fear. Daniel in the lion's den is really not a story we should tell children. It's a, it's a frightening story if we look at it deeper. Ultimately, however, good conquers evil. Ultimately, however, justice overcomes evil. Ultimately, however, God wins. And in the midst of these days of political maneuvering, some probably would even say manipulating, in these days, not really knowing which side to be on and trying to figure out what should we do? Where should we turn? What in the world is going to happen? I would, I would encourage us to stay faithful to God. Stay faithful to God. Pay attention to what you hear the Spirit saying because ultimately, I think God is leading us to good and God is leading us to justice. We all face challenges between worshiping Caesar and worshiping God. We all have had to choose between the law of the land and the consciousness of faith. The challenge as a people of faith is to stand fearlessly and faithfully in the conviction of our calling and and sometimes those lines are blurred and we have to think long and hard about what that means. I'll give you a couple of examples. My friend Tom is one of the deepest Christian men I know. In the 1960s, Tom marched with Dr. King and was arrested for his efforts. His testimony of faith while enduring jail time is chilling. And I love this man, and I'm grateful for his faith and his courage. My friend Bill is a deeply committed Christian and is especially important in my formation as a minister and as a person. He was a conscientious objector 
when he was drafted for service in Vietnam, because of standing on his character and his values, he was assigned to the medical corps on the front lines of combat in Vietnam. His testimony of faith while enduring that war is chilling. And I love this man for his faith and his courage. Both of my friends lived in the integrity of their faith while being manipulated by authorities. They stood for justice. They stood for doing right in the face of danger, and they were punished because of it. Daniel also lived during manipulation and political immorality. While judged to be an exceptional governor, his critics thought him disobedient because of his faith. And he was thrown into the, uh, into the lion's den to face certain death. But Daniel was protected. God intervened. And Daniel prospered even more for his faith and his courage. Daniel confronted the manipulation of his critics. God made sure that all the land knew of Daniel's faith, his integrity, and his blessing. Daniel changed the laws of the land as a good citizen and as a strong person of faith. One person can make a difference. As we hear all the political rhetoric in the coming weeks, remember your faith in God, not your fear of being maneuvered or manipulated. As you enter into the voting booth in November, remember Daniel, trust God, and vote as the Spirit leads you. What animal scares you the most? Why that animal? How would you feel about being locked in a cave with that animal? Another way of getting into this lesson, what laws of the land throughout history have seemed contrary to Christianity? Has there ever been a time when your faith has been in conflict with the laws of the land? It's an interesting question tonight. Daniel was not disobedient until a law was manipulated into place. And Daniel chose rather than obeying the God that uh, than obeying a law that would separate him from God, he chose to stay close to God, to stay faithful to God. So many ways you can go in this lesson and so many ways that relate to today. What kind of government did Darius establish? He established multiple levels of bureaucracy so that he didn't have to do anything but sit back and enjoy the spoils of being king. And what was Daniel's role? Daniel was the advisor to the king. Daniel's critics were not happy about him being that close. And so they put in place a law, manipulated the king to sign it into law, that anyone praying to God would be thrown into the lion's den. Evil, evil is rampant in Babylon. And not everyone recognized it. But it was there just the same. And so Daniel was disobedient to this law. He stayed faithful in his relationship with God. 
and his critics had him thrown into the lion's den. Darius was not happy about this. He was conflicted about it. He had to follow the law that he had put in place, even though he had been tricked into that law. In the days ahead, you and I will be maneuvered and manipulated by political candidates. Whether they are running for dog catcher or the king of the universe, many of those political candidates will try to manipulate us through fear. And rarely does any of it have to do with justice and righteousness. As I heard one man say, we're all just actors on a stage. That that may scare you more than any other thing I've had to say tonight. When you hear those things that make you uncomfortable, regardless of the candidate, regardless of the party, when you hear things that make you uncomfortable, pay attention. Pay attention. Daniel had been in the heart of the empire. He had been advisor to kings and had led in in straight and justice ways. He had done well for the empire, and now he is in the lion's den. You see, being a child of God, standing for justice, is not always going to be applauded nor rewarded. Pharaoh tried to save Daniel, but he couldn't. There were Levels of bureaucracy that had set their sights on Daniel. And when Daniel heard that the law had been passed, he didn't run and hide from it. People of faith, we should never run and hide. We should always be out front bearing witness to the goodness, to the justice and mercy of a loving God. But faithfulness is not always rewarded. Pharaoh couldn't save Daniel. Daniel didn't run or hide. His character for 50 years of service was without challenge. That is an amazing statement. For over 50 years, a man of politics was above reproach. Yet those who were around him were jealous. And so they made his faith to be against the law. It seems that humans have the power to hurt us, to hire and fire us, to break our hearts or twist our minds, to make us joyful or make us miserable. And when we put our faith in humans, we will always at some point be hurt or broken or disappointed. Which was the biggest danger? To curse God and stay obedient to the wrongful law or to disobey and stay faithful to God. In the end, only God could protect Daniel, and only God can protect us, which makes prayer so powerful. We pray not to change God's heart and mind, but to be in deep fellowship with God so that as we stay faithful, Maybe our heart and mind might be changed. 
so that we would be more in line with God and more aware of God than aware of human expectations. At daybreak, Darius comes to the tomb. That night he went to bed early. No party, no playing around, nothing, just going to bed. And sleep left him, the Bible says. He was worried about Daniel. At daybreak, he rushes to the Daniel, to the lion's den, and he hollers in at Daniel. Daniel, are you okay in there, Daniel? Was your God able to save you? Of all the dumb questions in the world, this one is right up there. The king standing before the lion's den already knowing Daniel was devoured by the lion. Was your, was your God able to save you? And what does Daniel answer? Of course. Of course. God has found me blameless. In the sight of the world, Daniel broke the law, but in the sight of the in the sight of God, he was blameless. So for many of us, when we find ourselves in the lion's den, there are many around us who are so happy we are in the lion's den. There are many who are applauding that finally we are in the lion's den and are happy that soon we will be done. They will be done with us. And someone stands outside the lion's den. Hey, Prosser, are you okay in there? Hey, Prosser, is your God with you? Ha, ha, ha. And, and on my best days, I say back, of course I'm okay. Of course I'm all right. I am a child of God. And that is my strength. And on my best days, I remember that. Perhaps the same is true for you. And how does the story end? Daniel prospered. May it be so for you and for me as we stand faithfully for justice, as we look around our world and see all of the injustice that we love mercy, that we do justice, and that we walk humbly with our God. It worked for Daniel. It will work for us as well. Let's remember that in the days ahead. Let's pray together. God, thank you for the courage and the character of Daniel. Thank you most of all for the challenge that you put before us in the study of this lesson. Help us, God, to pay attention to what the Spirit is saying to us in these days, that we too might be vessels of redemption, that we might be a people of justice, that we might be strong in our character and in our faith. We pray this in the name of one who was all of that and so much more, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Hey, everybody, thanks so much. Great being live on Facebook. I love this. And for those of you who are watching me later on YouTube or maybe watch me on YouTube on uh, Facebook later on, have fun with this study. You can see me in the Center for Christian Education YouTube channel. You can also check me out at bowprosser.com slash devotionals and here on Facebook uh, every Monday night. 
Thanks, everybody, for joining in. Send me some emojis. I always love to know that you're with me out there, and uh, I'll see you when I see you. Till then, Bo and the Beard, keep on rocking.